Hello and welcome everyone to Build Your AutoCAD IQ. I hope we are all having a good work week so far. Hang in there, it's almost the weekend. We are happy to have you here today and we appreciate the time you've taken out of your busy schedule to join us. Um, today's webinar is going to be Back to Basics, Modify Commands, the Saga Continues. I'm going to have Voker go ahead and click over to the next slide. My name is Sarah Emsley. I am a product support specialist here at Autodesk. I'm happy to be here with you. I will be moderating this webinar along with the awesome Nauman, our Autodesk expert elite, who is out in Cincinnati, and our veteran webinar all-star, Booker Coco, presenting today's um, technical demonstration. Me and Volker are also located out in Lake Oswego, Oregon. Before we get started, um, any questions that you have, please leave it in the chat window. We will try to get to everyone's questions as soon as we can. If you need to leave halfway or want to listen to the webinar, don't worry. These webinars are all recorded and links will be made available in the chat window. If you need any additional information about our past webinars, please visit our webinar YouTube channel at AutoCAD Exchange Build Your AutoCAD IQ. Another great site that has a bunch of really great resources and information is going to be our Autodesk Knowledge Network. Here you can find information for troubleshooting issues, downloading hotfixes, service packs for all of our Autodesk applications. I think personally the site is awesome sauce and I believe and I think all of you should go and check it out after this webinar today. Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass it on over to Volker, who's going to go over the objective and the technical demonstration. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Can we hear me all right? Excellent. Okay, so uh, welcome everybody. Glad everybody's here. Uh, before we actually get into the objective, I, I'm going to minimize it on the polls today, but I do have three I'd like to run, two right now, one at the end of the session. So the first one is, is this your first Autodesk Help webinar? And it looks like um, we have quite a few of you returning, so you're probably getting bored with this particular poll, but uh, we thank you for uh, answering. And welcome to all those new attendees. Uh, looks like about 12% right now. And I will go ahead and close that poll and share that with you just uh, so you can kind of see the numbers here. Uh, again, we're really happy you're all here. We um, do know your, that your time is valuable. So when you show up for these events, uh, well, it makes us really happy. So let's do one more, and then I'll get into the webinar. And this is uh, just to find out what application you're using. For the most part, we try to use AutoCAD LT because anything you can do on LT, you can do in the verticals. And um, uh, other times we do have a few uh, webinars which are done specifically for AutoCAD. And even some of that can be done in AutoCAD LT. So looks like about 42% use AutoCAD LT. I'll close this, or AutoCAD, I'm sorry, and 25% use AutoCAD LT. Just kind of give you a, a little idea of what the numbers are there. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on with our objectives for this particular webinar. So we're going to cover some modify commands. Uh, so this is designed for the beginners. Um, it does, I, I try to throw in some, um, not advanced stuff, but some tips, some shortcuts that might be beneficial to anybody, and uh, hopefully we'll all learn something from this little demo. We're going to talk about the scale command. 
as well as the align command, which is kind of like a rotate and scale command combined. And speaking of rotate, we'll also cover that one. Stretch command, and along with the stretch command, we're going to cover the, the lengthen command. So, um, again, if you're new, you've never used this. I know when I first started out, it's like I, I, I knew the basics of some of those commands, but not uh, all the functionality. So we're going to try and take care of that in this session. So let us take a look at AutoCAD. I'm just kind of waiting for that to switch. All right. So this data set, by the way, it'll be made available to you. Basically, this drawing, uh, the script with the steps of, uh, that I'll be using, as well as some additional resources, which are in the PowerPoint that I'm providing. Uh, so those will all be available uh, in the download link, which was uh, pointed out was in the, uh, the registration reminder, as well as the follow-up survey. And you should have seen it in the chat window as well. So anyway, feel free to download those. Uh, they'll be available immediately after the session. So uh, the examples I'm using are kind of diagrammatic, but um, I think you'll get the idea. We're going to start off with a command called align. The align command is it's basically a uh, command that uh, um, uh, combines both rotate and scale and move. So three different commands all at once. So in, in this example right here, I've gone ahead and copied a chair block from this particular location right here. I could have inserted this. I don't know what the angle of this wall is, but I want to align the chair with the wall itself. And uh, because this is a rounded corner, I'm actually going to do a uh, rounded corner because it's a round backing of the chair here. Um, I, I want to uh, do something a little different by adding a uh, different alignment point than the wall itself. I don't want it resting against the wall. So I'm going to create a temporary construction line using the offset command. Okay, so for the most part, I'm going to do stuff uh, from the command line, but initially when I first use a command, I'm going to show you where it is on the, um, on the uh, modify or draw uh, <laughs> ribbon <laughs> panel. And uh, let's see, the offset command, where is the offset command? I always type it in. So it's this little, um, it's actually this little hot dog with a, little bump on it, I guess, offset, okay? So the offset command just prompts me for a through point. Uh, we covered the offset command in one of our previous modify or uh, um, back, back to basic modify sessions. So you should check that out. We also have those data sets available. But I'm just going to type in a value of 12 inches for the through point, or I could type one foot, and I'll just offset this to the inside. And of course, when I'm done, I'm going to just exit out of that. Now, the align command would typically be found in AutoCAD under modify. In AutoCAD LT, it is not available as part of the ribbon. I'm not sure why, um, but it's not. I'm letting you know. So what I'm going to type in is AL at the command line. You could also type in the command align. A line can be used in both 2D and 3D drawings. I'm going to go ahead and select this. Note it is a block. I'm done selecting, and now it's prompting me for a first source point. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, select this endpoint right here as a through point, uh, as a source point, endpoint of that arc. And then I'm going to shift right mouse click and choose nearest. And that's just, I can pick anywhere on this line as, as a nearest point. 
Okay, so that was my sec, uh, first uh, destination point. I'm going to go ahead and pick this endpoint here as my first or second source point and shift right mouse click to access my OSNAP override because I don't have it set as a running OS, uh, OSNAP. I'm just going to pick nearest here as well. Now, I can pick a third source and um, destination point. I don't have one that works, uh, is there for 3D. Um, so I'm just going to hit enter to continue. And now it uh, prompts me, do I want to scale these objects based on the alignment points? In this case, no, but just to let you know, it will scale the block for me uh, based on the uh, uh, destination points. And I'll show you that in a, the follow-up example here. Right now, I'm just going to hit enter to accept no. Then I'm going to go ahead and select the erase command real quick like and type L for last to select the last object created, which was that construction line. Hit enter to erase it. And I've aligned this chair with this um, border. Now, I could have check the angle of this object, but that would have taken longer. You know, I don't care what the angle is, the chair needs to be aligned with it, so it, it doesn't matter. So it's just a lot faster just to use, uh, do those steps right there. All right, let's uh, take a look at uh, the scale um, example of this particular um, command. And I'm just going to right click, select recent input, align. And again, I'm going to select the object now. This is just an arc and we have a rectangle. I'm going to select my first source point. And this time I'm just going to make sure to specifically pick this end point of the rectangle, end point of the arc, end point of the rectangle. And I'm going to hit press enter. I could also right mouse click, but this time I'm going to choose N for no. Oops, N for no. That was dumb. <laughs> Let me do that again. Boy, um, for those who have been here before, probably all familiar with my little awkward moments. So uh, that was one of them. Hopefully we got that out of the way. Let's go ahead and do this real quick like to where we were. And pick, and pick, and I'm done, and yes, I want yes. All right, there we go. So that is the, uh, we basically rotated, moved, and scaled it at the same time. And you can do that with a block object as well for the align command. So uh, it's not, I think this is an overlooked command, okay? and. Obviously, in LT, it would be just because it's not found anywhere unless you know about it. But uh, even in AutoCAD, I feel it's um, it's uh, overlooked quite often. Okay, so next, let's take a look at the rotate command. Now, rotate, you wouldn't think there'd be much to it. But in this example here, there's uh, some functionality that's been added to the rotate command that I want to um, cover. Uh, actually, there are two functions I really want to cover. So we're going to start off, first of all, with rotating this chair. I'd like to rotate this chair 30 degrees, okay, an angle of 30 degrees. But I want to also leave the original chair in place. So one of the things in the rotate command is, uh, after selecting the command, I select the object. Once I'm done selecting, I hit enter, and I'm prompted for a base point. Um, base points are very important uh, anytime you're prompted for them, uh, and it, specifically in this case. If I were to pick, say, the midpoint of this chair or the insertion point or the endpoints, it's going to rotate around those points. So in this case here, I want to make sure that it rotates around the circle or table, if you will. Okay, and now I could just rotate it. But, um, like I said, I want a copy of this. 
So I'm going to type C for copy, which is one of the options on the command prompt. And so now it's in a copy mode, and I'm going to type in an angle of 30. So the thing is, we could have used a command such as array to do this. But if you're only going to make one copy, uh, this might be a lot quicker than going into the array command. So that is one function of the rotate command. So let's take a look at an example that is often overlooked. And this has been around a lot longer than the copy option of the rotate command. And that is a reference option. So with this particular uh, new building that they're planning on making, somebody calculated something wrong or designed something wrong and they realize, hey, we actually need this to be parallel to the main building here. Again, this is at a strange angle. Let's just take a look at the measure command angle. And we'll go ahead and, whoops, actually let's not do that. Let's do it by typing list. Yeah, it might even give us too much information. Yeah, never ad lib, never ad lib during a webinar. Let's just say this is at a strange angle. Um, distance command. And we can see that the angle here is, uh, I guess it doesn't show that. I thought it did. Again, never ad lib. So three awkward moments in the first 15 minutes. Not bad, Volker. Regardless, this is why maybe um, I'm not sure where all the tools are or I, I don't want to try and figure out the angle. Let AutoCAD do the work for me. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. And I'm going to go back into the rotate command. And I'm going to say, look, rotate around this. And then I have the option here or in my right mouse click menu to select reference. And so now, th this part here is very uh, clear, I feel, on the, as far as prompts go. It says specify the first uh, uh, angle. Well, you could type in a value. Again, I don't know what that angle is. So what I'm going to do is pick a point here and pick a point there. Okay? And until you pick that first point, you don't, you don't know that it's looking for two points in uh, the reference option. So now I could just rotate it, and I could do this, but is the building actually going to be uh, rotated to that angle? It was off. Maybe something else is going on in the drawing as well. So what I'm going to do now is right mouse click and select points. Basically, this is going to uh, allow me to select a reference object, the two points on it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And um, I'll, I'll just zoom in a little bit here. And I, I, I know for a fact I've got an end point here on a uh, vertical line. And this building may even be at a slightly off angle. So I, I don't want to just assume it's 90 degrees. But once I click that second point, it has now aligned or rotated the building with the... Um, uh, with the main building. And I actually meant to select the chair within that rotation op uh, option. So um, I did neglect to do that, but the, uh, the steps in the script uh, that I put together will uh, remind you to do that. <laughs> anyway, so those are two very cool options of the rotate command, the copy function as well as the reference, and reference, I think, is overlooked quite often. Next on our list is the scale command. So the scale command as well, it's pretty straightforward for the most part. It prompts you to select an object, and once you've selected that object, in this case, I have this gigantic chair here, right? Um, I'm, I can then scale this chair to the appropriate size. So in this case, I'll cancel out of this for a moment. 
This chair has actually been inserted at a scale factor of one. So um, I, I don't want to uh, reinsert this and try and figure out the scale factor, how much, how much bigger it is than this object. I don't want to redefine this block either to make it be more appropriate to this size because I don't know where else in the drawing it exists and I might update a detail or a uh, different view of a drawing. Um, typically we probably wouldn't have anything like this occur but it's the example I have. Uh, so instead what I'm going to do is scale this individual block to the same size as this block. So again I'll go into the scale command I'm going to type SC enter and it prompts me to specify a base point. I This time I don't want to use the center of this table because if I do it's also going to scale the distance between the center point as well as um, uh, the chair itself. So it's going to widen the um, narrow this gap in this case, and it may be close to, too close to the table or whatever objects you're trying to reference. So in this case, I am going to choose shift right click, and I'm going to choose midpoint as an override because I don't have it set. So that will be my base point. That way it's always going to scale from that point right there and not increase or decrease the gap. We also have a copy option here. Um, not sure how often I would use that copy option within the scale command, but it's it's there. I've, I'm sure I've used it once or twice, but uh, can't recall a specific example. Uh, but I do use the reference option quite often. And I will do so here. What I'm going to do is select reference. And it prompts me for to specify a reference length. So again, I'm going to go ahead and pick a point here. I'm going to use the front of the chair seat. I'll pick this point and then this point. And again, until you pick that first point, you aren't aware that it is looking for a second point. So uh, not that intuitive right there. But for the specified new length, it does have the option points. So again, points. And this time I'll go ahead and pick here, pick there, and it has scaled that chair to a more uh, normal size or at least relative to these chairs right here. So that is the scale command. All right, stretch is the next one that I want to talk about. So again, somebody messed up on this outline for this building here. The distance for this, I'm going to type DI for distance, I believe is about 40 feet. So I'll just go ahead and do that, 40 feet, indeed 40 feet. And we actually need this to be 52 feet. So what I can do is use a command called stretch. You could type in S T S, excuse me, S at the command prompt. Now the stretch command uh, will also move objects. So um, be aware, if it's an object like text, you can't stretch this. If it's an object like a block, well, it's not going to stretch that, but I could, I could certainly move that object just like that, okay? And the same thing goes with text or any um, object that is um, one solid object. But it will stretch things like center uh, uh, polylines, regular lines, um, arcs. We'll stretch all those things. So again, I'm going to go ahead and repeat stretch. And I am going to use a crossing window. Now if I had to say um, move a, uh, a lot of objects or maneuver my way through it, I may want to use a window polygon. I'll demonstrate that in a moment. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, 
window polygon right. So note how I selected all this stuff. And it prompts me for a base point. I don't have to pick a point on the object to stretch it. I could pick a point right up here. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and pick and point in the direction I want to go. Now, you may want to make sure that you have something like polar tracking turned on, F10, or ortho, F8, uh, just so you don't get it skewered like this. Uh, it's real easy to do. Uh, instead, with polar tracking on, for example, I can just now pick, have picked that point, point in the direction I want to go, and then I'll type in 12 feet. It's an architectural drawing, so I do need to put that apostrophe there, and hit enter, and it has stretched that to 52 feet. And note that I, I didn't select this text here, but I did select these objects down here, and so they moved along with the stretch. I'm going to repeat that command. I am ad-libbing right here. I just want to show this. If I want to um, stretch something, and in this case, I'm just going to move it, okay? I need to, and I don't want to, maybe, I want to avoid this here. A crossing window would not do it. This would not do it, because I'm going to select that chair. So what I want to do is type in something like CP, crossing polygon, and then do something like this. And note that this has been selected, the border of the building, so shift to remove. And now the stretch command is the move command. So. Um, crossing polygons for selection. Keep that in mind if you don't use that too often. It's a great way to get around stuff to not have to worry about grabbing it. Um, the stretch command, I mean, there are times if I just had a regular piece of line work, like uh, something like this, you know, I could just select that line and stretch it using a grip. But uh, uh, stretch command has a lot of Great functionality, you're resizing a title block. Um, you need to extend some wiring uh, line work. The stretch command is great for that kind of stuff. Along the same lines as the stretch command is our final command, which is the lengthen command. Lengthen, I um, think, is kind of under um, underrated. It's also... Uh, not a command that a lot of people use. We now have grips to allow us to do a lot of the things that the lengthen command uh, did for us. Uh, lengthen, I believe, was introduced in like AutoCAD release 13. And grips were not introduced until uh, quite a bit later, about six or seven years later. I think it was AutoCAD 2000. So um, this has got some uh, legacy application to it. But it also does some stuff you typically um, would need other commands for. So lengthen, I could type in L-E-N at the command prompt. And then it gives us some options down here. We have delta, percent, total, and dynamic. Total is the default. So I have two pieces of line work here. I really don't know what the length of this line is right now, and I don't care. The boss told me, hey, that needs to be uh, 12 feet long, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and select enter to accept total, and then I'm gonna go ahead and type 12 feet, enter, and I'm gonna select this line work. Now note that since my cursor is closest to this endpoint, it's extending the line work in that direction. If I go over here, it's going to extend it to the left. So I'll go ahead and do that, and I pick on that, and it does extend it. It also works on arcs. So here I'm on this endpoint of the arc, and it's going to chop off X amount to give me 12 feet. I'll do the same thing here, pick, and so it has 
quickly trimmed those objects. Had they been shorter than 12 feet, well, it would have quickly extended them. So um, there are times when trim and extend are really great. Uh, well, for the most part, they're probably the better use for trimming and extending. But uh, there are times where here I would have had to maybe create a construction line or, or something like that, measure the object first, and then I would be able to um, trim or extend it as needed. I'm going to repeat lengthen. And then we have the delta option. And the delta option, I'll go ahead and this time select it from the command line here. So the delta option um, will change the object's length by whatever increment I give it. Okay, so yeah, I know that this is 12 feet long. Um, I actually need it to be about four feet longer. So I'm going to go ahead and enter four feet. And again, we can extend that in the direction that I'm closest to picking with the cursor. Pick, there we go, and I've picked twice, I believe. But it also does this for arcs. Yeah, I need to pick on evoker. There we go. And pick, and pick. So it does not work on a closed object, but uh, any arc that uh, needs to be um, extended or, or shortened. And by the way, um, if I wanted to shorten that object, so let's go delta again, I could type in a value such as negative four foot, enter. And now it reduces that by four feet. So a negative value will reduce, a positive value will increase the length. So the last, um, uh, the next option here is percent. I'm going to go ahead and select percent. And the default value is 100. So obviously, I'll go ahead and type in 50 to reduce an object by half. And if I wanted to increase that object by a percentage, say by a half, then I would type in something like 150 to double it or get it back to normal. It would be 200. So percent, pretty straightforward. All this is pretty straightforward. But um, if you haven't used this command, um, then maybe um, it may not be apparent how or where it can be used for you. Some of you may never use it. Some of you may use it once in a lifetime. But um, uh, the one time you need it, it's there for you. So um, one more option I want to cover on here. And really, this option right here is probably the most um, legacy option you could have, and that's dynamic. Dynamic is basically very similar to having selected a, a, a grip. And I probably wouldn't use dynamic uh, at all of this functionality just because it is just like a grip. I can, I can pick and drag it in the direction I want. Um, so here I want to maybe go ahead and increase this by another 12 feet. I've done that. Uh, and the same goes for the arc. I can dynamically change its length, let's go 10 feet, enter. And the reality is, is that using a grip, I can do the same thing. So uh, depending on the type of object, it may be easier with the lengthen, but um, those are our modify commands for today. Uh, probably a little bit shorter than other webinars, but it'll give us a little time for Q&A if you 
if you have questions, we'll be happy to answer them. Um, and uh, hopefully some of this was new to you. If you're a beginner, it, um, I'm hoping most of it was new to you. So let me go ahead before we take Q&A on this. I would like to cover a couple of more items. There we go. All right. So first of all, I did put, oops, <laughs> that's a little out of whack there. Uh, I did put together this slide and obviously wasn't paying too much attention, but um, there are some additional resources available to you in this slide. Uh, so I've got links to all these commands that we touched upon. Uh, uh, and probably if you're going to use the lengthen command, you may want to definitely check that one out, the different options on it, uh, as well as our Autodesk Knowledge Network community. Uh, if you're fairly new to AutoCAD, this Hitchhiker's Guide to AutoCAD Basics is a valuable resource. And, of course, the Autodesk blogs, which... Um, not just stuff specific to AutoCAD, but uh, uh, to all, uh, pretty much all Autodesk products, there are different blogs out there with uh, a lot of talented people um, uh, leaving great information. We also have some coming attractions here, uh, except for next week. Uh, we're going to take an early break for the 4th of July. Some of you may be as well. So we figured, hey, why have you missed anything? Um, so we'll continue on July 9th with uh, AutoCAD 2016, Welcome to the Third Dimension. This is AutoCAD, not AutoCAD LT. And then followed by Back to Basics, Working with Layers. We did a previous session on layers. Uh, so this is going to kind of work on that, build on that particular webinar, which you can find on our YouTube channel. And then... The next scheduled session is working with the UCS. So that's most of July. Well, okay, there's one day in July missing. All right. Um, also, don't forget to check out our landing page for upcoming webinars. They, we do have the schedule there of what's coming up. Again, the links for this are in the um, uh, registration reminder as well as the survey. You can also leave questions about this presentation on that landing page. You can also leave feedback either on the current webinar, future webinar ideas, suggestions at our email address, autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com. Um, please be sure to add the subject line, build your AutoCAD IQ. We have several different webinars, several different teams doing these webinars. And uh, if you have a question or you need to um, uh, have an idea, we, we'd like to hear from you, and we want to make sure it gets to the right team. Okay, before we do our questions, let me run one more poll. Just want to know if this was even worth it for you. So basically, have you learned anything today? And I am happy, super happy to hear that most of you, 97% of you so far, um, 96, okay, 96. All right, 96% of you have learned something new. That's awesome. Um, sometimes with the basic uh, commands, I worry that um, we're not going to be assisting anybody in these webinars, and, uh, you know, we certainly don't want to bore people or lose people for future webinars. So I'm glad most of you uh, did learn something in this particular webinar. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll check with Naman and I'll check with Sarah to see if we have any questions that we can I have a question from Kathy. Kathy would like to know if she can create a macro for a line in LTE over. 
would that be a best question to try to answer at a later point in time? Maybe we can reach out to Kathy post. Actually, um, uh, yes, you can. You can easily create one. We actually did um, a webinar on creating macros. That uh, webinar is available on the YouTube channel. And the download link uh, where we have the data sets, uh, the macros that were used in that webinar uh, will uh, those those are uh, in there as an example so you could actually copy and paste those and modify them to your content but yeah you can easily create a macro that uh, that's what I've done in the past I if I need to set a macro uh, to um, create a layer set it to current uh, go into the line command uh, very easily done if you understand the basics and the syntax of macro so Great question. Thanks for asking that one. And I hope I answered it well enough. Okay, we have another question from John. John would like to see if we can repeat the stretch command, please. Yeah, certainly. Um, so I'm just going to do it on this particular, um, let's do something different here. I'm going to go ahead and use the rectangle as an example here. Right, well it would help if I um, showed AutoCAD, right? I do this all the time, people. <laughs> Awkward moments, what can I say? Um, so I uh, should be able to see that screen now. And I've drawn a rectangle, as I said. And I'm going to go into the stretch command. And so if I put a crossing window around this corner, let's say, like this. Oh, OK, I'm going to go ahead and stretch this. But then I don't quite get the rest of it. And I hit Enter. Then it's going to skewer it like this. OK, so I want to make sure that when I stretch something, put my crossing window around it like this. Once I pick that second point, I can pick anywhere, either on the object or uh, somewhere off the screen, and I can either type in a distance or pick a point manually uh, in order to stretch that. So uh, maybe another scenario would be like repeat stretch. This time I'll go ahead and stretch the bottom here, and I'll pick here. And maybe I want to reference this point, and I've stretched the rectangle to um, um, get done what I needed to get done. <laughs> Sorry, don't have the, uh, didn't have the right words there. But yeah, that's the stretch command. Um, one one other thing. Again, if you don't quite encompass something or or, or select it the way you want, so let's do a repeat of stretch. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, do this. Okay, so I've, I've selected all that to stretch. I pick, but the object that was enclosed within that window is going to move. Um, and uh, let's see, I believe, let's go ahead and erase that. Yeah, so it also stretched this because it was underneath it. So be aware of that. I hope that was what you were wanting to see. I believe that answered his question. And for the most part, I think we've covered everyone's questions. Let me just do a quick scan of the chat and questions window. Mm -hmm. No, I, I want to throw that to Nam. Nam, do you see any other questions that you'd want to add to the webinar before we yeah. go ahead and end the recording? Yeah, some, uh, someone asked, can you stretch a circle? I think uh, the grips command uh, is great for, uh, you know, stretching the circle. Uh, it's much faster and quicker. You just uh, click on the edge and just drag it. Yeah. 
So one thing about using grips is that if I especially like stretching this circle, it allows me to see how far I'm stretching it. And if I turn on dynamic input, which uh, I'm one of those drafters uh, who does not use the dynamic input, although at times I do just because I can um, get a better visual of something. You know, there's a lot, lot of information there uh, that this, um, well, the stretch command would give it to me like this, but um, um, uh, not quite as much. Um, I, I think grips are, for the most part, are a lot more effective uh, than a lot of these commands in the long run. But there are times where um, stretch might be more appropriate or lengthen um, or align, you know, uh, depending on the circumstance. You have to think about this stuff. You know, we did a productivity class, um, tips and tricks uh, webinar a while back, where I showed people about the change command, which does the same thing. Um, one of the options is the same as stretching or extending objects. And uh, it may be a one it's in a lifetime command to be using, but uh, it worked for the particular scenario. Uh, here, here I can also type in a value such as 12 foot. And I've now gone ahead and changed. The distance of this, which is the radius, is 12 feet. I changed the radius 12 feet, and it changed the diameter 24. So um, I'm easily able to do that using grips and uh, dynamic input. Or even without dynamic input, I could have typed in 12, and it would have changed that radius. So it all depends yeah, what you need to get Dynamic through. input is also... Uh, of course, uh, I think uh, uh, it's a very least used command these days. I mean, if, if the newer, older uh, uh, users, uh, older, I mean, uh, people have been using AutoCAD uh, the longest time. Uh, they tend to not like it, but uh, it's very powerful because it it adds that lengthen uh, command within itself, as well as uh, it has a lot more uh, effective when you combine it with Polar as well. Right, and I completely agree with you. If you are a new user, yeah, keep that dynamic input turned on. Um, I leave it turned off during these webinars for the most part, unless it's necessary, uh, because I want to show more of what's happening on the screen as opposed to what dynamic input is giving me options to do. Those options are all available on the command line. But um, as Naman said, um, if you're a new user or even a um, old school user like me, there's a lot of information available in dynamic input. It's kind of like a, a lot of old school users want the toolbars. They don't want to see the ribbon. Well, there's a lot of stuff on the ribbon you're not going to find anywhere else. You know, so if you haven't been using the ribbon, I encourage you to do so. There's, uh, there's just buku stuff on there now, and it's um, you're not going to find those on a toolbar or a pull-down menu. And, um, it's a lot, uh, I, I think, a lot more efficient nowadays than when it was first introduced, when a lot of people first started seeing the ribbon. Oh, my God, what, what do I do with this? And it doesn't work the way I want it to. Yeah, it wasn't that great when it came out, but it's, it's an awesome tool. And the more I use dynamic input, the more I like it. So. Can I add one more thing, uh, Walker, with the Please. dynamic input? Can you just uh, quickly demonstrate the tab key? Uh, kinda it, it basically emulates the length and command. So with that, if you stretch that circle again, um, and then um, if you use the uh, tab key, you can uh, so you drag that out a little bit more. Um, yeah, so. You should be able to like use the tab and say you want the delta or you want the full length to be within the dynamic input. Well, the, yeah, I'm not following on that one. Uh, I'm tabbing through um, it right now. Okay, so when you but, are now, you tap through it, now you are saying the delta is 14 feet. Now you're saying overall a length is 20 feet. Right, okay, now, now I see what you're saying. I apologize. So, yeah, good point. 
Nauman, uh, you have those different input fields here as well. As, you know, you can tab through the options. Uh, if you haven't used dynamic input, you can use the um, the arrow key, the down arrow key in this case here, to select which option you want to use. A uh, lot by default, the command line nowadays is one line of text. I still recommend making it larger, but you can see all the prompts here. Uh, it's just the command line is going to give you a little history of what, what you've done, which dynamic input won't do. So, Naman, that was that was a great great um, little uh, tip there. Um, okay, um, unless there, I, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, I appreciate everybody's time. We're going to give you ten minutes back um, for those who haven't already left. Um, and uh, we know your time is valuable. I also hope you'll be here for our next webinar uh, in two weeks. And I hope we all do that you have a safe and wonderful holiday weekend coming up. I know it's 10 days away, but um, this will be the last chance I get to tell you that. So last chance we do. Thanks again, everybody. And uh, have a great weekend and then a great holiday weekend.